What's up everybody? Well today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to replace motor bearings on a motor for a Hoover Elite. Because apparently no one ever talks about this or mentions in depth of how to replace motor bearings on this. So how to take the motor apart, and unfortunately I forgot to pick up the camera and show you how to take it apart. But when I did, easy ways when you pull off this motor housing, it exposes the, the field windings and the armature. So basically what you're gonna have to do to, to get it down to this is you're gonna have to pull out the carbon brush holders, like here, they actually hold on the field windings. And then once you pull those off, the motor will just slide off like that because the the carbon brush holders are the ones that actually hold down the field windings. I have found that out. Well, obviously, well, obviously first when you pull the carbon brush holders out, you can then free up the armature. Yeah, that thing, that thing needs bearings bad. But then you pull out the armature, then the field windings, and then you expose this inner bearing that's actually held on by this metal plate. So, as you can see, it is held on by pop rivets. So how to get these guys loose is you're gonna have to take a 3 three sixteenth drill bit and then set it your drill to forward and go to town. With a little bit of persuasion, let me see if I, I can do this on camera. Ah, ooh, that was nice. So forget that that just happened. And sorry, I accidentally dropped the camera. But then, okay, now once you got your rivets drilled out, this can now remove out the plate that holds on your motor bearing. So now you can slide this guy out. As you can see, I already had this tore apart right now because originally I was just planning on greasing the bearings and then it would have been good to go. But I decided to go all the way and be brave and replace both bearings because I figured this thing could use some. All right, now to get the one off the motor shaft, you're gonna have to take a bearing puller tool, basically get it leveraged just right. And let me see if I can't show this on camera. All right, to get this one off, you're just gonna wanna hold it in place and turn, and turn this clockwise to pull it out of the threads. But once you got it pulled off, and there it is. Now you got your old bearing off the shaft. Man, this one is, is nasty. I don't I don't even know if this one's even worth rebuilding. But anyway, I'll get back to you once the new motor bearings come in. All right, my new motor bearings just showed up. I got the other one pressed down in there because I already put it on the shaft one time and it easily slides on and off. These are 608 style motor bearings. I'm gonna show you how to put, put the one in on the fan side. So, so just simply slip this in and work it in until it seats. And then you're gonna have to put the bearing retainer plate in. And this is the part that's gonna be kind of tricky because you're gonna have to re-rivet this back in. So I'm using uh, 3 16 rivets. These are a one, four, uh, one fourth length. 
So what you're gonna have to do is, is insert one rivet in on one side and one on the other. Just like that. Then you're gonna have to take a riveting gun and then attach it on one end. All right, put the bearing plate back on. I already riveted one side on. So let me go ahead and show you the other side. Just simply set it down in and take your riveting gun and then just slide it down in. Make sure you already have the tip on correct for the size rivets, 3 16 then, then just press and as you start to press it on, you will notice the tip kind of crowning towards the end there. So that way you know it's working. So just set it back on and just keep going at it. And as that breaks off, now your bearing plate has been riveted in place. And now you just gotta take that out. And the bearing plate has been put back in. Now one thing I want, I'd like to do to make sure it's going back in place is just slide on the armature just to make sure it it spins freely and it doesn't bind against the rivets. So as you can see, there's good enough clearance. So let's go and slide that out real quick right now. Start to put everything in the motor back together. All right, so how everything puts back together, you're gonna wanna put the field windings back on. As you can see, it lines up right there. First off, critical, make sure the power switch is in the on position. That way when you slip the slider switch back on, it's in the on position and then when you turn it into the off position, at least at the slider switch, it'll lock in place. So as so once you put that on, the next thing you're going to want to do is install your carbon brushes. Let me go ahead and slip this in. You will notice as it starts to becomes as it starts to slip in, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you line up the, the end, so. Well. Okay, and see if I can't slide this in, it's not. All right, I decided to turn my flash on to put the next brush in, but as you can see, there's this kind of little J hook inside there that's on the field windings. So basically as you slip the carbon brush in, it's gonna, I'm gonna lift it just slightly, but lift it up so you could slide it in and the, the J hook will grab on to the carbon brush holder and just, sorry, it's not easy to do on camera. But then you're just going to want to press it back in and then should be seated. All right, next thing is to slide the armature into the into the motor, but Probably gonna have to get off camera and get some needle nose pliers to try and uh, and move the carbon brushes out just slightly so that the armature slides in all the way. All right, the brushes are out slightly, so now the the armature slides in. What I'm going to do next is is tighten up the fan to make sure the armature stays locked in place and it's not going to walk out on me. All 
All right, next I'm gonna move the carbon brushes back in. Brushes back in. All right, now I got the carbon brushes bent back into position. Everything seems to line up well. So now all that's left to do is take the motor casing side slide it on to the motor. We obviously critical, make sure the power switch is in the on position. And line the motor shaft into the bearing side and just slide it into place. Passing on is you're gonna wanna drive down this little bearing. I found a uh, eight millimeter deep well socket works the best. That way it kinda goes over the top of the me of the metal part of the bearing so you don't damage anything. So you just drive it down just slightly on the motor shaft. And then once it's all finished, you can just slide the motor casing on. Make sure the field windings are all tight and secure. And then you could just put this motor casing right on. Simply should just slide right in. All right, once you have everything put back together, just simply rotate the motor to make sure nothing's binding. So far, I haven't found any. So next thing you're gonna wanna do, take this pile of parts right here. Right here, that's the little dust seal. But first you wanna set the the fan chamber housing back on. It's held on by these little Phillips screws. So, anyway, just simply thread them in place. And go ahead and get off camera and get a Phillips screwdriver. All right, once you've got it back on, you're just gonna wanna replace this little dust seal right here. Attach on another seal on the top of the motor. And your motor rebuild is complete. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is stuff it into the the vacuum I'm, I am using for a motor rebuild, and then we'll go from there. All right, there it is, the vacuum that got its motor rebuilt, the Hoover Dimension Supreme. Basically, the motor rebuild that I showed you today will apply for all of the Elite Style uprights. So for now, let's go ahead and give it a test run and see if my motor rebuild actually did something. So for now, I still need to buy a light bulb for it because I forgot to actually put one in when I put the motor in. So for this test run, it's not gonna, this vacuum's not gonna have a headlight for this demonstration. So away we go.
This thing runs much better now than it did when I first got it. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this motor rebuild and show you how to do it on a Hoover Elite style upright. Be sure and stay tuned and don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.